all right so uh, in this session we are going to discuss uh, everything about uh, the potential difference between two points a and b if uh, the charge distribution is nothing but uh, an infinite uniform line charge density uh, having a constant charge density given by rho l so as you all know again the general formula for finding electric field potential or the potential difference between two points b and a where b is the initial point a is the final point is given by this formula where e is the uh, the where e is the electric field intensity or the force field of the source charge distribution so if the source charge distribution is uh, an infinite uniform line charge density so we all know that the best way uh, to loc locate that particular infinite line charge density uh, is on the z axis if you want to uh, uh, take advantage of the symmetry or of uh, cylindrical charge distribution sorry cylindrical coordinate system all right so here we have shown that uh, location that the we have got x axis y axis and, and z axis is uh, definitely going into the board or coming out of the board i should say it is coming out of the board and on z axis is uh, that infinite line charge distribution is located all right so that line just line charge distribution is you know coming out of the board and is an in infinite in in its length and has got a constant uh, charge density given by rho l for this placement of uh, line charge distribution the formula for potential difference between two point reduces to this simple formula where we don't have to do any integration in fact uh, this formula came after putting the electric field intensity of an infinite uniform line charge density here and carrying out the uh, the necessary integration so we got this expression all right where b is the initial point and a is the final point rest is constant rest is constant right so what is b let's say we want to find the difference between this point and this point this point is a and this point is b small b so this expression is basically giving us the amount of work done which we'll have to do in moving a unit positive charge from point b to point a in the presence of this uniform infinite line charge distribution located on the entire z axis given by rho l so uh, we all know that if if we are using cylindrical coordinate system then this a is nothing but this distance and this b is nothing but this distance all right for derivation you can check the video lectures regarding uh, the potential and potential difference which we have already uploaded all right so uh, okay so uh, this point a small a is actually on a cylinder whose radius is small a and this point b is again on a cylinder whose axis is z-axis where the line charge is located but whose radius is b so amount of work done in moving a unit positive charge from this point to this point in any fashion it can be straight it can be swirly it can be you know zigzag as long as the initial point and the final points are same uh, it means that uh, we are going to get the same difference in potential all right so uh, these cylindrical surfaces in three dimensions two dimensions these are circles in three dimensions these will be uh, you know cylindrical surfaces and these cylindrical surfaces will be equipotential surfaces okay so we can we can say we can write in this particular uh, arrangement of charge distribution 
uh, using cylindrical coordinate system and placing the line charge, uniform line charge on the entire z-axis, we can say that rho is equals to a, rho is equals to b, mind that these are rows, rows are the first of the three coordinates of uh, cylindrical coordinate system. Don't confuse these rows with row L's, which are the charge, line charge distributions, all right? So row A and row B, where A and B are constant, or for that matter, rho is equal to any constant, any cylinder, which is centered, whose axis is actually z-axis, uh, any cylinder in this particular charge distribution is going to be an equipotential surface equipotential surface so if you if we would move from one equipotential surface to another equipotential surface all right we are going to get the same potential difference regardless of the way in which we move we can move in a straight line fashion we can move zigzag swirly any and in, in, in any fashion we can we can make a complete spiral starting from b and going down slowly to a in any case the amount of work would be the same and hence the potential difference so uh, each equipotential surface is going to have its own absolute potential associated with this with this all right so this expression is valid for this particular arrangement of an infinite uniform line charge density but what if what if uh, what if the line charge is not located on z axis what if it is located off z axis somewhere here 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 or what if it is located on entire x axis all right so let's generally consider Let's consider, <clears throat> for the sake of generality, let's consider that this, the, the line charge density is not located parallel to any of the axes, x, y, or z, and it is not, you know, at origin or it is not crossing origin. So, how can we find potential difference in this case between two points? B and A. So remember from this expression, from this setup, A and B were the perpendicular distance between point A and the uh, line charge was a distance A and the perpendicular distance between uh, point B and the line charge was small b. Okay, so let's say we have got a potential, uh, we have got uh, point A here whose coordinates are x1, y1, z1 and another point whose, uh, another point B whose coordinates are x2, y2 and z2. Okay. And you know uh, the location of this line charge. Okay. So now what we have to do in order to find this A, this A in this formula is we have to drop a perpendicular from this point on the line charge. And the perpendicular from this point on the line charge. Once we do this, since we know the location of this line charge and we know the location of points A and points points A and B, we can also find the um, the coordinates of the of the points these two points we can also find the coordinates of these two points 
x1 prime let's say y1 prime and z1 prime and the coordinates let's say let me call this point a prime and this point b prime the coordinates are x2 prime comma y2 prime comma z2 prime so once you would you are given with the location of this line charge rho l and the coordinates of these two points between which we have to find the potential difference we can find a prime and b prime okay once we know this then we can find uh, this distance which will be a and this distance which will be b so uh, it might be a little bit confusing for you because I'm using the same nomenclature for both the points and the distance. So what we can do is change this formula a little bit. Potential difference between two points A and B in the field of an infinite uniform line charge density is given by this. So this is point A and this is point B where this is a small a and a small b are the perpendicular distances of this point capital A with respect to line charge and this point capital B with respect to this line charge respectively. So here I should also say that, that this point was capital A and this point was capital B and the perpendicular distance between capital A and the line charge was a small a and the perpendicular distance between the capital B and the line charge would be small b. So now it, 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 is, it makes more sense to us now. So uh, now and I uh, since I have changed the nomenclature there so I should write it a prime and this as b prime. So now this a small a the distance which we have to replace here is given by x1 minus x1 prime square plus y1 minus y1 prime squared plus z1 minus z1 prime squared under root the distance formula and the distance between the capital B point capital B and this line charge which is uh, B prime so the distance between B and B prime is given by distance formula again x2 minus x2 prime squared plus y2 minus y2 prime squared squared plus z2 minus z2 prime squared. Now this is how you will calculate, you will find the uh, values a and b here and then replace it over here to calculate the potential difference between the two points. So uh, in the case of uh, in infinite line charge density given by rho L, the potential difference between two points A and B is given by, by first evaluating the perpendicular distances of those points A and B with respect to the line charge density and then replacing those distances over here in this formula and uh, doing the rest of the maths. All right, so I hope that uh, this session gives you a good idea of how to deal uh, in finite line charge densities if we are to find the potential difference between the two points. So remember that this formula is, uh, is, has, been uh, has been driven using this particular setup but can be extended to any setup where the line charge may or may not be placed along z-axis.
So the only thing which we have to do is to calculate these perpendicular distances and replace these distances over there. Hope this helps.